Hey guys, so we're continuing to work on our Kodiak and make our preparations for a big haul season three. I've got a couple more storage ideas that we're gonna be implementing onto the Kodiak and I'm working on the first one now. I've already kind of gotten a jump start on it because I wasn't sure how everything was gonna line up and how I was gonna mount it. I wanted to get to that point first and make sure that everything was gonna fit right, that it was gonna work out and then uh, try to get a little video of the install. So what we're installing here is um, this is the Lippert underbelly storage compartment. Now, unfortunately, the one that I wanted, which was the large size, was unavailable. It was unavailable to ship by the time that I needed it to get installed on the Kodiak before our big, before our big haul. And so I had to settle for the next size down, which is their standard size. So that's what we've got right here. I've got the rail already clamped up to the frame of the Kodiak there, and I'm getting ready to transfer the whole locations and drill them. And uh, so I thought I would go ahead and get the camera and show you where we're at there. But um, what I would like to do at a later point is probably remove this one and install the large size because the compartments for these don't go all the way back to the center of the camper. So we've got a big gap in, in between the two bins there that's not being used. Alternatively, you can get the same underbelly storage rack with a unit in the middle that actually holds your spare tire. But since I already had an idea for a spare mount behind the axle there, I didn't want to utilize that storage compartment space to hold a spare. I wanted to have all storage there and then the height of spare uh, behind the rear axle there. But we're going to get to that later. But I'm going to give you some highlights of how I'm going to install this. It's, it's um, you know, it's never fun getting underneath these things and having to work on your back and everything. But it's relatively simple if you can get it clamped up to the frame. I'm having to make some spacers because we have a gas line that runs underneath the frame there. So we've got to space it out about an inch. And um, get it clamped up with some spacers and drill the four holes and you're pretty much in business at that point. So jump in there and we'll show you what we're doing, okay? So before we get under the frame, we'll go ahead and show you the storage compartments here. So these are the two storage containers that go one on each side of the frame there. They are made out of plastic, okay? And they say that they'll hold up to 100 pounds. I got this little finger hole here so you can lift it up and open, the, open this guy up. And all it does is just give you a nice little storage compartment there. Now, keep in mind, these are not sealed to the elements. You can see it doesn't seal up or anything. So... It's not to be used for any kind of like really expensive gear, but you can certainly put anything in there that you want. Just keep in mind that it's, it's not, uh, it, they don't like lock up. So they could, this could be something that somebody steals some of your stuff from, but we're going to be putting, you know, the pieces, the parts for the sewage connections, uh, water hoses and extension cords and just things like that, you know, lo uh, leveling ramps, just things that I'm stored in the pass through is gonna be coming in here that aren't so critical, all right? Now, unfortunately, the shipping apes got us this time on this one. When this guy showed up, the pallet was absolutely destroyed, and this lid right here was basically laying off of it like that. Not that big of a deal. These are just pieces of rubber here and rivets, so I'm gonna drill these guys off and just find some stainless screws and just screw that, just screw them back on there and fix that. I can tell that they damaged it with the forklift, you know, trying to handle this thing. So they've got it all scuffed up right here. There's scratches here. There's a big old gouge on the bottom of it right there. So people come in here with a forklift and just jamming into it and just absolutely destroyed it. That's probably why this got ripped off because the fork pushed it or something. But we're going to end up replacing this later with the large unit. Hopefully the next unit that comes is going to be in better condition than this. But since our trip is coming up in a couple weeks, we're going to get this installed and they're going to work pretty good. But you can slide them all the way out and they're locked in. There's a spring loaded pin on the side of the frame that you pull and then this locks it in. And then whenever you slide it out, that pin also locks into that rear hole, keeping it from coming all the way out from the, uh, the frame there so that you can open it up and get whatever you want out of there. All right. So there's a little overview of our storage compartments. Now we'll go check out the frame that they mount in. All right, so we're over here on the uh, driver's side and I've got a phenolic spacer in there. This is some stuff that I had already in a, in a storage bin and I'm using that. That's gonna be spacing this side off, but I've only got three of those. So I'm gonna use two on the other side. I've got this piece of one inch thick nylon that I can cut to length and we'll, we'll use this on, on probably this side here. 
That way it'll span the entire length there and space it out. And the reason we're having to space it is because on the other side, over there on the other frame, or the other side of the frame, we have the gas line that runs underneath the I-beam. So you need to make a one inch spacer in situations like that so you can space it down. But we got this side uh, centered, measured from that hanger shackle to the side of the C-rail, 27 and a half, same on the other side. We got it clamped up. I'm gonna transfer the holes and drill them and go ahead and bolt it in and um, go ahead and cut this and we'll install that there as well. Okay, and here we are over on the passenger side. You can see here's the gas line that I'm talking about that runs underneath the, uh, this part of the frame all the way to the back. So you've got to make some kind of spacer to go in there. One inch will, will suffice on the, on the thickness there. So since I've got these phenolic blocks, I'm going to use those on one side and use that nylon on another side over there. That way we don't have to worry about this stuff. It's never going to rot or rust or corrode away. It'll, it'll be there. So we've got it all clamped up where we want it. The outer holes is what I have lined up with the outside part of the C-frame or the, the uh, I-beam, I'm sorry. So we'll drill two holes on each side. I'm just gonna run up through here with my drill and uh, drill both holes and get it bolted in. And then after that, all I gotta do really is just go ahead and cut one more spacer for the other side. We'll use these two phenolic for this side and the nylon on the other. And, and after that, it should be about ready to go. So I'm using some uh, stainless steel nylocks, nylon lock nuts. I'm just getting them pulled up close for now so that I can uh, get the uh, spacers out and modify those as I need to. All right, since I've only got one of these phenolic blocks left, I'm just gonna take this guy and uh, cut it in half, and I think that's gonna work just fine. That's really all we need to do. Stick it in the saw and cut it. I measured it twice and it's still too short. Nah, just kidding. We got them both cut the same length right there. So what I do, what I did on the other side, I just go ahead and get this clamped back in between the frame or between the C-frame and then the trailer frame, clamp it in there, and I just run the drill up through the hole to uh, drill a hole in this and then put the bolts back in there. Pretty simple, easy to do. I wanted to quickly mention these drill bits that I use. These are excellent for doing things like this where you're out here drilling, hand drilling on a frame, on a trailer or anything where you're just hand drilling. These are called the vortex point. The way that these guys are made, the way they're ground is that they're ground like a step drill on the end. So when you're trying to go through thin materials or if you're just hand drilling, the way that these are made is that it reduces the tool pressure versus a conventional jobber drill. And it makes hand drilling a whole lot easier. They come in this nice plastic case that seal up and you can just carry them where you need to, but highly recommend these. And I get these from KBC Tools and Machinery. Excellent set of drills to have in your toolbox. All right, there we are mounted up. That's what the spacers look like. Only on the other side, they're a little bit longer because I used two. That worked out pretty good. So if you mount this up on your rig, it's probably gonna have to be something like this. You can find whatever material you want. You can even use maybe some hardwood, but that's what I had. That's what we used. I went ahead and got the other storage compartment fixed and all I did was just drill out the, the uh, four pop rivets. I had some quarter inch stainless steel hardware in the shop I used, some bolts, flat washers, and uh, nylock nuts. So I got that fixed up so that our container is gonna work the way it's supposed to there. This is the one that got a little bit bent so it's got a tight fit there, but you can shove it down in there. 
So we're about to the last phase. We just need to test fit these guys and see what they're gonna look like. All right, the only thing we've got left to do is just load them up in there. You gotta pull the pin. That'll be the out position right there. So once you slide it out, it'll lock it. It's got a little wiggle there, but it's not gonna come out. All right, and then you can lift your compartment, your lid up so you can grab your things, close the lid up, pull the pin, slide it in, and then that pin's gonna lock in another other hole. And there you go. Perfect storage for all of the stuff that you don't want in your pass-through. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, that stuff out, start loading it up in here and uh, getting that stuff out of the pasture. Let's go load up the other side there. There's your lock out, locked in. So we wanna pull some stuff out, pull the pin. Access your goods. You can even use that as a temporary cooler storage if you wanted to. Can I put <laughs> shoes in there? No, I wouldn't put shoes in there. This is the kind of stuff you don't want to store things that you really want to take care of because you know it's going to get you're going to get water and moisture in there because they're not sealed up in fact one of the things i forgot to mention is that i thought that they came with holes drilled in but they didn't so i'm actually going to drill a couple of holes in the bottom of this thing so that if water gets in there it can have a way to drain out because you just don't want it filling up with water but this is going to be great for those things like extension cords lights water water hoses, all of the hardware and gear that you want to carry with you, with your rig, this is where it's going to go, right here. And it has 100 pounds, is that what it says? Yeah, each side is rated to 100 pounds, so you can safely carry 200 pounds total of cargo inside this thing right here. You can tell it is hot, it is muggy. <laughs> I am ready to get further north from here, away from all this hot, this uh, heat and humidity and uh, get to some cooler temps. Should be coming real soon. I'm really excited about that. I've been looking forward to this for a while and this is really gonna help us out. All right, so there's your look at it out from the side, what it kind of looks like mounted, how far it sticks down. I know I'm gonna have folks that's concerned about that hanging down too far, saying that it's gonna scrub. I think we're gonna be perfectly fine. If you, if you get back here and draw an imaginary line or you can use a string or a rope, from the furthest point on the hitch there down to the bottom of the tires, anything below that is possibly will hit. I think the bottom of that storage compartment is above that uh, invisible line right there. I'm happy with it and I think it's gonna work great. I'm actually looking forward to getting the, uh, the larger unit and hopefully that's just gonna be a simple unbolt this one, bolt the other one back in. And the large unit actually has a much longer storage compartment there that you can use to store even more stuff. So you might even be able to use the large one to put like your, a couple of your chairs in there if you want to. And they also, again, they make it so that you can mount your uh, spare tire in the center there as well. All right, we about got these guys loaded up. So this was the uh, compartment I was using or a storage container to hold our extra things like this right here. The uh, sewer hose connections, the little accordions for the for the hose, and a couple other things. I still got a little bit of room in this for some extra things, so we'll fill it out as we need. It's going to be awesome. Let me pull the pin. All right, we'll show you what's on the other side. All right, I emptied out this one with most of the stuff that you see here. So we have our two water hoses that we use, the filter. I've got all of the water hose connections back in there. And it, I, I also uh, carry extra ones because I have forgotten them at the, uh, at the spigots before. Gotten better about that now, but it's just some extra hardware back there. We have our leveling ramps in here. We have our chalks in there. And that is pretty well filled up. This is exactly why I wanted the large version because I wanted to maximize the capacity underneath this thing. But this is going to work out really good for here. Store in those things. And bam, there it is, out of the way. Now we can take those out of the pass-through and have more room for other things that are a little more important to keep up here in the dry storage. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video, our install on the Lippert underbelly storage compartment. And I'm really happy that we had got this and we've got it on the camper. It's going to be great having those things that are stored in there out of our pass through and freeing up some of that space for some other things. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm real excited about having that on our trips now. A little more convenient to get through when we're outside getting ready to hook things up. But I am looking forward to upgrading that. Once we get back from our trip, hopefully we're gonna get a hold of the large unit and it should be a simple swap out, unbolt it, bolt the new one in and give us even more storage capacity because those other ones for the large units are longer and it's like one inch deeper than this guy right here. But it worked out pretty good. I think the install went uh, fairly simple. Hopefully that'll help out a few of you guys out there too. Searching YouTube on, uh, you know, other people that's already installed these things. That's usually what I do. I try to find other videos and see how other people have installed it and kind of give me some ideas on how difficult it's gonna be or things that you may not expect that's gonna happen. Like in our case, we had to make those spacers to go into there so that we could clear the uh, gas pipe. But it worked out pretty good. We do have uh, one more video of another install that's gonna, that we're gonna be getting at next. I have the uh, height of spare that we're gonna be mounting behind the rear axle that will uh, store our spare tire underneath the Kodiak and out of the way to get it off the back. So we'll have a separate video for that. And, and uh, once I get that done, we're gonna be pretty much ready to get on our way for the big haul. We've got a few other little things that we're doing um, inside as well. And uh, Abby will probably wanna take some video of that whenever we get to those as well. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed and we will see you on the next video.